Right now we are tracking Sandy as the deadly storm threatens southern New England at this hour. State and local officials are meeting to discuss their readiness efforts. We have Governor Lincoln Chafee taking the podium soon in just a few minutes. And as you see, we have pretty much every recognizable uh, face and uh, state and local uh, official here at this scene right now at this press conference. Looks like they're just getting underway. We'll uh, take a listen in. Good afternoon. All Rhode Islanders have been tracking the forecast for Sandy, and it still is on the same track that we've been following, headed towards New Jersey, a left into New Jersey, then a right around Rhode Island. But nonetheless, we have grave concerns about not only the high winds, which we experienced a year ago with Irene and power outages. The rain events are not forecast to be that significant, but now the most worrisome aspect of Sandy is the high tides, particularly Monday's a full moon high tide and all Rhode Islanders that know, they live along the water know that in the full moon they're very, very high and with a, actually occurring the, the full moon on Monday with Sandy coming up the bay, we're very concerned about flooding in our low lying coastal areas. So I've been in touch with the mayors and town managers of these uh, communities this morning and they've already activated any evacuation plans they have to uh, to let people know that uh, they should be aware that uh, of the storm surge coming, that they should be on guard and look for shelters and be prepared. Uh, with Narragansett Bay being a funnel and with this big event of Sandy, a long event, uh, there's concern the high tides are going to occur Monday morning about 9 o'clock and then Monday night about the same time. So those are the two, particularly Monday night at 9 o'clock, a long hurricane with stacking of the water up the bay, even when the low tide comes, that water's going to remain up, and then the full moon high tide coming again uh, up the funnel of Narragansett Bay. So Cranston, Bristol, Providence, Warwick, these are the ones at the top of the bay, East Providence, that are really going to have concerns. Uh, I'll turn it over to General McBride, and, and not only at the top of the bay, but also we have concerns about the coastal areas that have seen flooding in past storm events. So Charlestown, uh, Narragansett, uh, Jamestown, Newport, Portsmouth, uh, all these coastal communities. North Kingstown, of course, uh, have to be prepared. This is going to be a full moon high tide. I've always been concerned about that occurring at the same time this big, big uh, storm event is coming to Rhode Island. Even though it's veering towards New, New Jersey, uh, we do expect uh, big water events coming up uh, Narragansett Bay and hitting our oceanfront communities, Rhode Island Sound communities. Uh, General Bride. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. As we further prepare uh, for the onset of the upcoming storm, uh, I'd like to reiterate a couple of things that the Governor said, that uh, we have concerns about coastal flooding, as he mentioned, and also the storm surge relative to the tides, uh, the timing of the tides. Uh, we've had an update on the weather forecast earlier this morning. Uh, we've spoken with further um, members of National Weather Service who are doing the hydrologic modeling. Uh, so we do have further concerns as it impacts the bay in the coastal uh, communities of the state of Rhode Island. We've been messaging over the last couple of days for preparation. It would be my strongest recommendation that everyone complete their preparations by nightfall this evening. Um, I don't think it would be a good idea for people to be evacuating communities if they're going to go uh, stay with relatives during the uh, nighttime hours. Uh, some of my concerns would be uh, some of the water overtopping our adjacent roadways in Narragansett, South, uh, South Kingstown, uh, Tiverton, Little Compton. So I would be strongly recommend that we do so uh, by close of business today or by nightfall today, I think would be the best thing. Again, uh, personal preparations around the house, uh, tightening up with lawn furniture, any low-lying branches, things of that nature. In addition, I would also recommend if you have catch basins near your driveways or what have you, if you could help your local public works directors out by keeping those clear, the leaves and whatnot will exacerbate the street flooding. While we don't expect a high amount of rain with this storm, we're more on the sustained wind side of the storm. Uh, that is my greatest concern. Uh, we've been watching the sustainment of the wind and the storm uh, as it's progressed and developed, and that has been the concern that we've had. Uh, we're looking at a period of 
much greater than what we had during Irene last year, uh, where that storm seemed to go through fairly quickly. This one will, will be around for um, a number of hours, at least most of the day on Monday. We'll still see remnants on Tuesday as it starts to drift out away from us. So uh, those are some of the strong uh, recommendations I make from my standpoint. We've front loaded and have uh, National Guardsmen uh, that have been alerted. Uh, they'll be on standby to provide support operations as we did during Hurricane Irene. Uh, we're working very closely with the Rhode Island State Police, all of the local emergency management agencies uh, and agents without, throughout the state so that their preparations and needs, um, we've been in constant communication with them as well. Uh, the Emergency Operations Center here at the Rhode Island EMA has been stood up and now on 24-hour operations. Our Joint Operations Center for the National Guard is stood up and we are on 24-hour operations as well. Uh, and I would say that we're well prepared uh, as the storm approaches. At this point, I'll turn it back to the Governor uh, for any further questions. Okay, I will say that I have declared the uh, state of emergency which does allow us to access federal funds and prepare uh, with National Guard and federal assets. So I, I have done that, joining some of my fellow governors. And looking forward to a call with uh, President Obama, who's also reaching out to the governors of the storm-affected states uh, later this afternoon. Governor, what does that mean, state emergency? It allows us to access the federal uh, resources that we need, and it's a preliminary step that uh, we did in Irene, have also done here. I was watching the storm, and with the new uh, event of the storm surge becoming more clear and the length of the hurricane, uh, those two coming together, the flooding and the, the storm surge are my biggest concerns right now. We know we're going to have power outages, uh, and we're going, th those are going to occur as we did in Irene. We have the experience of that, National Grid, we've been in touch with them. They're uh, very well prepared. We all learned a lot in, in Irene all Rhode Islanders and GRID included. Governor, regarding COVID surge, what's the worst case scenario? Well, my concern is that we've never really tested the hurricane barrier in Providence, and uh, I'm concerned about once that barrier creates a dam of the f surge coming up Narragansett Bay, uh, they call it flood displacement. Where, does the, where do those waters go south of the barrier? Uh, so that's, that's one of my concerns. Governor, for all the uh, superintendents of school out there faced with the uh, big decision for tomorrow, do you have recommendations? No, the, everybody knows that uh, with tight budgets, they're trying to make smart decisions, and uh, that's up to the local communities. And we'll make a decision on the state side also uh, later today. Governor, what about mandatory evacuation for recommending? Some of the towns I've seen were recommending at least as of noon time. What, what can you tell us? I, I know it's up to them, but is there a recommendation to do something? No, this is up to the local. They know their communities best. And we were on a conference call with the town managers and mayors of these coastal communities. They know the areas that are affected. They know them well. That, that's the best decision left up to them. How many towns have made evacuations? I don't think anybody has yet mandatory. None. I do believe North Kingstown has canceled school tomorrow because of shelter issues and they really have some low-lying areas where schools are used for shelters. I know National Guard's going to be on the register. Do you know how many people are going to be on the register? Do you know where they're going to be placed? Do you know where they're going to be placed? General McBride can best handle that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right now I have over 200 uh, on standby that will be on the ground here first thing tomorrow, but uh, we've developed a contingency plan that has flexible capability so we can adjust as the situation dictates over the next couple of days once we move into the recovery effort. The 200 on standby will be here? Uh, they'll be spread throughout the state. We have a, a plan put together that puts our soldiers in the best location so that we can get a better understanding of what's happening within the communities and more quickly respond to whatever the communities or local police department needs are. So you're talking about 200 National Guard? That's correct. What about National Grid? National Grid? Uh, we had a discussion with them less than an hour ago. Um, we spoke with uh, Mr. Tim Horn of National Grid, and he has over 2,100 individuals that have already uh, on station. They've organized themselves in, into a uh, regional-type response effort, and I would defer any specific uh, questions directly to National Grid, but I would tell you from my perspective as the Emergency Management Director, as well as the, uh, the Adjutant General, that. Um, the whole response effort at this point is much different than it was the last time. You think things are going to go better? 
Yes, that I would I would say based on our, our uh, coordination effort, I would expect them to the response effort to be better. Good governor, maybe to what you were talking about the hurricane barrier never being tested. It's you know the way news goes literally on the, the handheld here. Uh, some numbers from the Weather Channel thinking the surge might be the third worst on record. I'm looking at Hurricane of 38, Carol 54. I mean this is I mean potentially could be a historic storm surge. Yes. That's, Yes. I mean, yes. Generations haven't been driven. So yes, and now we have the hurricane barrier, which obviously came after 54, and uh, so we don't know uh, what's going to happen the, with those waters uh, that hit the barrier, where, where they go, and that, those are my concerns. Is, is that what the weather people are telling you as well? Those numbers that, uh, you know, in terms of the historical yes. nature? Yes, and that's, I opened the press conference with, that's my biggest concern right now. When with the duration of the storm, a full moon, high tide, I mean, these, these, these are high, high waters in the bay, just naturally at a full moon. And now with the, this long duration hurricane and what they call stacking of the water, even during low tide, it's gonna stay up the bay. And then the next full moon comes late Monday or, or nine o'clock Monday night. That, that's the area of concern. Are we better off that the storm isn't hitting us directly? Oh yeah, uh, yes, uh, yes we are, yes. yes. We don't wanna say, say everything good, but there is good here. Uh, we're not New Jersey. That's a lucky year to talk about. Yes, yes. Senator, you why do you serve the microphone? We're very lucky to have the federal delegation that's the, the best in the country, so it's appropriate you're asking now, uh, Senator Reid, a question. Excuse, I want to explain what you've asked the President to do. Well, Senator Whitehouse, Congressman Cicilline, Congressman Langevin, and I wrote a letter uh, two days ago uh, asking the President to be prepared to uh, respond immediately to a request by the governor for emergency assistance. Already, uh, I believe a FEMA team is on the ground. Is that correct? That's yes, correct. Sir. So we have a liaison with the FEMA, uh, Federal Emergency Management Administration, already. And on the military side, General McBride's been in contact with Northern Command, which is uh, the military side of emergency operations in the United States. So we already, and again, I must commend the governor, uh, General McBride, uh, the EAM, EMA personnel in the state for planning, for coordinating. Uh, and so from a standpoint of being ready, uh, I am convinced that uh, their efforts have put us in a much better position than in previous storm episodes. Have you heard anything back as far as the request for expedited Oh, I'm confident that we will get expedited assistance. As the governor indicated, the president has himself reached out and is calling directly the governors later this afternoon. So he's, he's aware of what's going on, he's aware of the storm, and they're gonna be very responsive. In the previous episodes, the, the administration was here. I think Senator Whitehouse was with, uh, and Congressman Langevin and Congressman uh, Cicilline at the time were with uh, Secretary Napolitano was here. We've had Secretary Donovan up here. We've had a number of people. So we, they've been alerted and they are working hard to uh, be prepared for whatever happens to us. If I could add, we were on a, a conference call. We were on a conference call yesterday with uh, Administrator Fugate of FEMA, with the head of the National Hurricane Center, leaders of, of the uh, National Weather Center, and the American Red Cross. And they described a massive regional deployment of resources to from the mid-Atlantic up to uh, southern New England so that they're extremely well prepared wherever the hit is taken the hardest. They did warn that southern New England should be prepared for major impacts was their phrase mm -hmm. and their concern as the governor mentioned is not so much for the intensity of the storm but for its duration and the people will be uh, sort of uh, comforted by the fact that the wind doesn't seem that strong and the rain doesn't seem that hard and not prepared for what a storm of the duration that is expected can be done uh, as well as the tidal and surge flooding. Based on the la latest weather that we received earlier this morning, um, the th the duration we're looking at, it's obviously we're going to see some impacts uh, later on this evening, starting after 9 o'clock, I believe. The greatest impacts that we're concerned about is the high tide tomorrow morning around 8 to 9 a.m. That's when we'll start to see that storm surge move forward uh, throughout the day tomorrow to include the high tide tomorrow evening. So that gives you about a 12-hour uh, intensity of period uh, that we're concerned about. However, 
that doesn't mean the storm will be gone after the high tide tomorrow evening. That, that's the period that we're most concerned about the surge in the upper bay. But the winds will be sustained into Tuesday. And we expect that you'll start seeing some, uh, some of the winds subside Tuesday, but probably late Monday night into Tuesday morning. What are the most specific areas that you're really concerned about with the surge? I mean, we're looking at that upper bay, like kind of the Cranston, Barrington, Warren, Bristol, right. Greenwich. Well, the thing that concerns us is the prevailing winds for this storm, uh, southeast, east, southeast, uh, and then out of the south uh, as it progresses. So that constant uh, hammering from the, the surf, as well as uh, the tidal surge up the bay for the two high tide periods uh, tomorrow morning and, and tomorrow evening. Uh, one of the problems that occurs with that type of a prevailing wind, it doesn't allow that low tide to get to allow all of the wind, uh, water out of the bay. So you get this stacking that the governor referred to, and then when you compound another high tide beyond that, it further exacerbates the problem. So as we look at that and its impacts to the coastal communities, those are our concerns. Allowing people that are in those low-lying areas within each one of those coastal communities, and that's why the governor had a discussion this morning with each one of those coastal community leadership and to uh, have a discussion about evacuations if they so desire that that was a concern of ours as a result uh, of the storm. So they've already taken a look at that. And again, as the governor said, they know their communities well and they know what it takes to evacuate those low-lying areas if they deem it ne necessary. And there's a time frame involved and there are other things that are involved in that to support those operations, whether it be police support on the roadway network to control the traffic as it, if they do uh, do some localized evacuations and other things. And those are the things that we work through uh, emergency management agency here to coordinate that. How concerned are you well, obviously, this is a very powerful storm, and as I started off saying, I, my biggest concern was the duration of the storm. So I would say that my concern will remain through uh, tomorrow evening, and we'll see the, uh, the impacts, and hopefully, you know, we won't have the response requirements that we had after Hurricane Irene. But again, the sustained winds uh, for a longer period of time is a concern of ours. Governor? Yes, maybe, if, Colonel, anything you want to add on the state police side? Certainly. Thank you, Governor. Um, as for the bridge, the people who live that go over the bridges at 58 miles an hour sustained winds, commercial traffic will be limited. You won't go over the bridges at 69 miles per hour. Same thing for passenger vehicles. We suspect somewhere around 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday. So people that are crossing those bridges need to know that. It's also important to know that state police will be teaming up with um, our National Guard as well as the National Grid at Barracks. They'll deploy out to help out anywhere needed. We're also working with the local police departments to coordinate efforts to respond. The last piece I'd like to tell you is in 1954, we lost a trooper in a storm. So the thrill seekers that need to go out and pay attention to the waves, stay home. We ask you not to compound the problem that may happen. Thank you. Uh, really, uh, there was something in the beginning I didn't hear about what you were saying. You closed the bridges at 58 speed? Wind speed at 58 miles an hour for commercial vehicle traffic. That's um, Pell and Mount Hope Bridge. At 69, mile, 69 miles per hour sustained winds for passenger vehicles. So DOT is working with the state police to block those bridges when it happens. And we suspect it will happen somewhere after Monday morning at 6 o'clock or so, but we'll monitor that. The entire division is on standby, and if needed, we'll deploy in the entire division of state police. Thank you. That's correct. Anybody else want to add anything? Thank you. Um, thank you, Governor. I, I just want to say that during the uh, conference call that we had with Administrator Fugate, and we'll have another one at 1 o'clock today, one of the things they really emphasized was the obviously very heavy uh, winds and the duration. And so I just want to encourage Rhode Islanders to think about not only your own home or uh, your own yard in terms of lawn furniture or anything else which could fly away, but be certain to check in on neighbors, particularly uh, neighbors who are seniors or disabled who may not have the ability to secure that if everyone just makes an extra effort to reach out to people in your neighborhood and your community uh, to be sure that that's been secured. It's really, really going to be important. Dr. Fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to, um, as many people are concerned about uh, their loved ones in healthcare facilities across the state, 
We have monitored all the hospitals. We've done generator testing as well as uh, with hospitals and nursing homes as well as the direct care facilities that are run by the state of Rhode Island. So there's actually been a couple of group homes, a few group homes that have already been evacuated. Um, and uh, I'll give another specific, Dr. Fine will talk about another specific, but we're monitoring it all. Uh, we are very much ahead of this one uh, to make sure that people are very secure, that their loved ones will be um, uh, protected in, in safe quarters as we uh, go through this storm. Dr. Fine. Yeah, we've had actually great collaboration and, and cooperation from all healthcare facilities um, and all healthcare providers. Um, just a couple of quick messages for uh, people with different conditions and situations. It's important that people refill their prescriptions um, and have a supply with them. It's important that people have a list of their medications with them. Uh, it's worthwhile making sure that people put their refrigerators up to the highest setting and to put a, a thermometer, thermometer in their refrigerator. And we'll have some suggestions if we lose power. Um, if you have a gas grill, this is a good time uh, to make sure that you've got a full tank of propane. Um, and it's also a good time to fill up your refrigerator, or your freezer, um, so that if we lose power, uh, the refrigerators will keep uh, perishable foods as long as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, from uh, Irene, all, all that loss of food as the temperatures dropped in the fr refrigerator. So that's good advice. Any Governor, other questions? Turn to you. And one of the questions was, with, with, at least it's not a direct hit, but I am concerned about this full moon high tide coming at the same time as this long duration event. I mean, that full moon comes once every 30 days, once a month, and it happens to hit right here, the very day of uh, uh, Sandy's hitting. All the Upper Bay communities, so starting with Providence, East Providence at the very top, and then coming down to Warwick, uh, Bristol, Barrington, Cranston, these are the top of the Bay communities. And then if you go up to Mount Hope Bay, probably not as much, but still it's the funnel effect coming up the Bay, so that's Tiverton and into the Massachusetts communities. So the Hurricane Bay is built in the 50s, it's never been used? Well, it was built in the 60s, and we just haven't had the big storm surge event. We've had other high wind events. We've had blizzards. We've had other storms. Well, surely when it was planned, they figured yes, out what would Yes, yes. Yeah, but we've never seen it. The experts built it with the full knowledge of flood storage and the capacity of where it goes, but we haven't seen it yet. Let's hope it doesn't happen uh, Monday and Tuesday. Is there a less concern in the northern parts of Burrowville, Gloucester, Socket? Well, we have the recent experience of Irene. We've all been through that. And we all know, uh, particularly in those communities that uh, are in wells, uh, how difficult it is, especially the farms, getting the animals watered uh, when you don't have power. And the farmers trying to, uh, with high winds, losing apple orchards and the like. Okay, um, after I read that, I was out of the city of Warren, uh, and uh, part of the slowdown was the uh, before that could get to Oh, absolutely. And Congressman Cicilline talked about helping your neighbors, but also uh, clearing the debris out of the, the catch basins because. Uh, the leaves are all going to come down. All the leaves are coming down in the next couple of days, I would expect, all at once. And so everybody just pitching in and everywhere possible. Director Lewis. Thanks, Governor. A um, couple of, as the general and the governor pointed out, we've learned a few lessons from past events, including Irene. One of them um, is the coordination with um, National Grid. So we have the DPW, RIDOT crews are coordinated with the grid crews to make sure that if they need um, tree removal, we can support them, help them do that where the emergencies are, are, are happening. Um, also, as the general pointed out, we've done a, a major cleanup of all the highways, of all the, the hot spots for surface drainage, but with the high winds, all of these leaves are going to come back down. 
and be in the highway. So there is really, there is a risk of localized flooding, even though the rain event isn't expected to be that severe. With the leaves coming down, we do expect there will be problem areas that we'll have to be um, ad addressing um, as they're identified. Um, so, and we have crews pre-positioned, working again, coordinating through um, the guard, through EMA, um, so that we're all working together, pre-positioning crews um, for those areas. And as the governor and everybody else have pointed out, it's the low-lying roadways that are, we're most concerned about, uh, and that's where we're going to be working closely with the communities and the state police um, as those roads uh, are identified, that we have resources available to, to help to close them. We're, we're bringing them in um, after midnight tonight, um, and, um, we, but we'll be monitoring events, and they're ready to, they're on standby, so they'll be ready to come in at, at the moment's notice. All set? Thank you. Thank you. So you're hearing right now at the uh, wrap of this news conference that the governor has declared a state of emergency for Rhode Island. Basically, that allows the state access to federal funds as they start to put together a response here. Now, for constant updates throughout the day on this, you can always go to WPRI.com and check your mobile devices, too. We'll have constant updates. And you can go to WPRI.com and uh, check tonight's shows, too, at 10 and 11 as we bring you the latest there. For now, let's go to the uh, pin Pinpoint Doppler 12 Forecast Center, live with Pete Mangione for the uh, latest on the track of Sandy. Pete. Thanks, Stephen. Not to downplay the effects that the winds will cause, including power outages and those damaging winds down trees, but uh, the big concern here is that storm surge. And remember, in these kind of storms, that is the biggest threat to life is the storm surge. So a coastal flood warning in effect that starts tomorrow morning. It goes until tomorrow evening. Storm surge projected three to six feet and a high wind warning in effect. That is tomorrow morning until Tuesday morning, 35 to 45 mile an hour sustained with some gusts up to 70. And if you are asked to evacuate, please do because uh, you know you don't want to mess around with this kind of situation. We'll have more details coming up on uh, WPRI. Uh, Tony Petraka is in later this evening. We also have the latest on WPRI.com. See you then.